Yudhisthira, who was without any enemy, was unfairly defeated in gambling. But because he had taken the vow of truthfulness, he went off to the forest. When he came back in due course and begged the return of his rightful share of the kingdom, he was refused by Dhritarashtra, who was overwhelmed by illusion. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Yudhisthira was the rightful heir to his father's kingdom, but just to favor his own sons, <coughs> headed by Duryodhana. Jitar Astra Maharaj Yudhishthir's uncle adapt, adopted various unfair means to cheat his nephews of their rightful share of the kingdom. At last the Pandavas demanded only five villages, one for each of the five brothers. But that was also refused by the usurpers. This incident led to the war of Kurukshetra. 
The battle of Kurukshetra, therefore, was induced by the Kurus and not the Pandavas. As Kshatriyas, the proper livelihood of the Pandavas was only to rule and not to accept any other occupation. A Brahmana, a Kshatriya, or Vaishya will not accept employment for his livelihood under any circumstances. Oma jnana timaranjasya jnana shalakaya atsur nirvihanyena tasmai shri gurve nama vanchatavpatarubhyasya And then they had another gambling match and 
was the name the region where they would go into exile for 12 years and they, they went into exile and one year incognito as well so the fact that was did all this they went into exile and they took one year incognito where they were hiding from others and then they came back and they said now we want our kingdom back but Duryodhana was not going to give them any kingdom didn't want peace. It's, they said just give us five villages and he said I will not give you enough land to go through the eye of a needle what to speak of a village I won't even give you enough land to go through eye of a needle so in this way Pandavas had no alternative but to go to war and Duryodhana was happy he wanted war because it was his chance they thought we will kill the Pandavas in the war. They will all be killed. They thought that we will win the war and they will be killed. So Duryodhana wanted war and he induced war by not giving land to the Pandavas. So Maharaj Yudhisthira was insulted. He didn't get what he wanted. He, did, he wanted the kingdom. <laughs> he wanted a kingdom. He wanted that uh, well, He wanted a share of the kingdom. But they're giving nothing. So they had to go to war. And uh, it's mentioned how uh, Kshatriyas are not allowed to accept employment. They're not allowed to work for others. So the Pandavas were denied the village. They were denied any land to rule. So you cannot be a Kshatriya without having some kingdom. You can't be a king without having a kingdom. <laughs> You know, if you say you're a king, you want to know where is your kingdom? The Pandavas were king, they were root king, they were kings, but they had no kingdom. So what what are they supposed to do? You can see in the Kali Yuga the Ganashram system is degrading. That people who are Kshatriyas are all working. They have jobs. They work in the office or in the factory or they're employed. And even the Brahmanas, you go, if you go, like I used to do my membership in India, and we used to go to this place called Birla House, the Birla family. You know the Birla family? You don't know Birla? Birlas? Yeah, they're big industrialists. They have big businesses, so very good. and they worship Lakshmi Narayan, and they built many temples. You can see, like in Hyderabad, in Calcutta, and they have, they have the Villa Temple. They call it the Villa Temple. You know, and they have a big picture of the the head of the family who built the temple. So I used to go there to Villa House to make my members. The people there in Birla House, the office, the office workers, many Brahmanas. And you go there to see them, oh yes, Mr. Thakur, or Mr. Pujari, or Mr. Purohit, you know, how are you? Oh yes, you say, yes, I'm a Brahmana, and like that. And what are they doing? They're working in the office. And I'm working, to work in the office, that is sutra work. That is not Brahmana work. The Brahmana is supposed to do certain duties. Brahmana can only, he can study the scriptures, 
and he can teach the scriptures, and he can worship the deities, and he can teach others to worship the deity, and he can accept charity, and he can give charity. But in the Kali Yuga, the Brahmins are expert in only one thing, to take the charity, accept the charity. They don't do anything. They don't study, they don't worship, they don't study scripture. They don't give charity, they only take. And that's how the Brahman, as you see, you go to Vrindavan even, you see many Brahmanas there, they have the shop. <laughs> have a shop. Have a business. Business. Shops, that's for the Vaishya. That's not for the Brahmanas. But this is Kali Yuga. Brahmanas are too big. So Maharaj Yudhisthira was Kshatriya. He didn't want to give up his caste. He wanted, he wanted to remain Kshatriyas. They didn't want to take up service to others. So what to do? They had, they had no choice. To accept employment would be de de degrading. It means to become sutra. So they didn't want to become sutras. They were kshatriyas. And they had the royal blood and they had the qualities of the kshatriya, but they had no kingdom. So that how to get the kingdom? They have to fight. There has to be the war. So that was one reason why they had the battle of Purusha. And Prabhupada says here, this war was induced by the Kurus, not the Pandavas. Sometimes people will blame Lord Krishna for the war. But it was Krishna who encouraged Arjuna to go and kill all the people. Krishna was responsible. He's the one. And they, they criticized, they condemned Krishna for encouraging Arjuna to kill so many people. But uh, Lord Krishna was only keeping the honor of his devotee because Arjuna was a Kshatriya and he had come there to fight. So if he didn't fight, then certainly he would lose his, he would have no position anymore. Another quality of Maharaj Yudhisthira is mentioned his truthfulness. Maharaj Yudhisthira, he, he made a vow that he would not tell any lie. And just like Maharaj Dasara in Ramayana, Maharaj Dasara also had that principle that he would not lie. Right? Ra Rabo Kali, Rabo Kali Rakchali Ai Pranjayarun Vachanajai. That Maharaj Dasara said, Better I die than tell a lie. I will give up my life rather than tell a lie. So that was the, the kind of vow which the Shakyas would take. And Maharaj Yudhisthira also did not like to lie. He didn't have that habit to lie. He had a vow to truthfulness. So when they lost in the gambling match, he had to go. He had to go to the forest because that was the, the agreement. So he kept the, kept the vow. They went and lived in the forest for 12 years. They had to wait for 12 years before they could come back. And Maharaj Yudhisthira was so truthful that at one point they, wa they wanted him to tell a lie because Drona was fighting very good in the battle. Now Drona, Dronacharya, he's the guru of the Pandavas. He taught them how to fight. He taught them how to use all the, all the weapons. And Drona was fighting against them. So they were having a difficult time. Drona was killing all, many of the soldiers on the side of the Pandavas. And they thought, how will we ever defeat 
Dronacharya. So Lord Krishna gave them an idea. He said, tell him Ashwatthama is dead. Ashwatthama is the son of Drona. And Drona is very attached to his son. Right? You have a son, you're very attached to your sons. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the ladies are <laughs> yeah. so, so Ashwatthama, the father, he's also attached to his son. He's also feeling his, his son, Ashwatthama, uh, when he was a young boy, he never tasted milk. Because Drona was very poor at one point. He was so poor, there was no money for milk. And the other boys, they, cheat, they tricked him and they gave him some chalk dust to drink. He said, what is this? And they said, this is milk. And he, he was drinking it. And they were laughing at him. They gave him this chalk dust. So Drona felt very bad that his son was not able to drink milk. So that was when Drona decided he would have to teach military arts. Although he's a guru, he's a spirit, he's an acharya, Drona acharya, he had to come and teach all the military arts in order to allow his son to get proper food that he could get even some milk to drink. So Drona was teaching the Kurus and the Pandavas. And Drona had to fight on the side of the, the Kurus. He had to fight against the Pandavas. Although he liked the Pandavas. And Arjuna was his favorite student. And he blessed Arjuna that you will be the greatest archer in the world. And he taught that Arjuna everything, how to fight him. But still, they couldn't defeat Drona in the battle. How to defeat him? So Krishna said, tell him Ashwatthama is dead. Tell him his son Ashwatthama is dead. But Maharaj Yudhisthira said, who, me? Uh, I, can't, I can't tell a lie. Maharaj Yudhisthira never told a lie. Didn't want to tell a lie. But he said, this is how we will kill him. When he hears his son is dead, he will stop fighting. You can kill him, that's how you can defeat him. But Maharaj Yudhisthira said, oh no, that's not fair. No, I can't do that. No, no, I'd be lying, cheating. Oh no, I can't do this. He was so moral. Even the lives were at stake. But he didn't want to break his vow of truthfulness. So of course, Lord Krishna arranged another way that they said, okay, you know, wait just now. There's an elephant, Ashwatthama. Kill that elephant. So Bhima killed the elephant. He said, now tell him, the elephant, Ashwatthama, is dead. So they told Maharaj Yudhisthira, you know, just said, just tell him, Ashwatthama is dead. Ashwatthama, that was the elephant. So Drona heard, Ashwatthama is dead. He said, what? My son is dead? Oh no. And he put down his weapon, and he sat down, and he went into Samadhi. He entered Samadhi. And while he was in Samadhi, then Drishtajuna came, killed him. He killed him when he was in church. Actually, Drishtajuna was born to kill Drona. Drupada had done a yagya. And Maharaj Drupada, he did a yagya because Drona had a quarrel. The two of them, they were friends in the Gurukula. And Drupada was a Kshatriya and Drona was a Brahman. And Drupada told Drona, he said, when they're in the Guru he said, if you need any help, if I can ever help you, I'll be, just come to me, I will help you. 
So it happened. Jonah was very poor. He had nothing. So he thought, I will go to my friend, Maharaj Dropada. He will help me. So he came to see Maharaj Dropada. And Dropada said, No, no, no. I can't be a friend now. Friendship is only possible between equals. I cannot be your friend now. When we were in the Guru Kula, that was then. But now it's different. Now I am the king and you're the Brahmana. So, and during the thing, just, just give me some wealth and give me some proper food for my son. No, 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 I can't help you. No, no, I can't be your friend. So then Drona went to Hastinapur and then he taught the Pandavas and the Kurus and then he trained them to fight. He said, now go fight Drupada. And so they all went to Drupada. First of all, the Kurus went. The Kurus couldn't defeat him. So then the Pandavas went. The Pandavas captured Drupada and they brought him a prisoner and they put him at the feet of Drona. And Drona said, now I can take all of your kingdom, but I'm only going to take half of your kingdom. You can keep half yourself. I won't take everything. But he took half of the kingdom of Drupada. So Drupada had a lot of hate for Drona. He wanted to get revenge. So he did a yajna, and he wanted to get a son who could kill Drona. So he did a yajna. And he got a son and a daughter from the fire. When they did the yoga, born from the fire. Drishta Juna and Drupadi. Yes. Right? So Drupadi was also, she was also involved, of course, in the battle of Kurukshetra. So although she didn't fight, because they insulted her. The Pandavas had to fight. They had to make, get, take action against their enemy. So they told him, Ashwatthama is dead. So he wasn't really dead. It was a trick. But they did that. Maharaj Yudhisthira, it said, before this incident, Maharaj Yudhisthira's chariot didn't even touch the ground. It used to float off the ground because he was so pious and he never told a lie. But after this incident, the chariot came down to the ground. Now people say it came down to the ground because he told a lie, but actually that's not true. It came down to the ground because he hesitated. He hesitated to follow the order of Lord Krishna. He didn't want to lie, although Krishna told him to do it. So because he didn't follow the order of Krishna, that's why the chariot came down. So, Lord Krishna doesn't, doesn't care about mundane morality. Just like Krishna sometimes tells lies also. Right? Krishna told, I won't fight. But when Arjuna's life was in danger, Krishna was ready to fight. So sometimes Krishna does. Krishna is doing these things. Morality, not so important. What is important? Surrender to Krishna. Alright? All right, so this was one point, the gamble. Now, should Kshatriya's gamble, you have to understand the challenge. They have to take the challenge, they have to accept the challenge. They cannot refuse. Although gambling is sinful, we don't gamble. Kshatriya's also <laughs> usually the one gamble, but sometimes they're challenged. So throwing dice, just like one time there was a, a Lord Krishna married Rukmini and Rukmini had a brother called Rukmini. 
So it happened that there was a wedding took place, and I think it was the, the, the grandson of Rukmi was getting married to the grandson of Krishna, to the granddaughter, or the grandson of Krishna was marrying the granddaughter of Rukmi. Anyway, there was a wedding. And at the wedding, Rukmi challenged Lord Balaram to a game of dice. And Lord Balaram, he's also not very good at throwing dice. And Rukmi challenged Balaram to a game of dice. So, when they had the game of dice, first, the first game, Rukmi won. And Rukmi, all the friends of Rukmi, all the the, the, the demons, they were all ah, ha, ha, ha. they were all laughing and they were happy because Rukmi won. So then they increased the wager. The first of great wager was 10 gold coins and then it became 1,000 gold coins. Then it became 10,000 gold coins. Then it became 10 million gold coins, you know, huge amount of money. They were betting and every time this Rukmi was winning, but then after some time, Balaram won. And when Lord Balaram won, Rukmi said, No, no, I'm the winner. He wouldn't admit that he'd been defeated. And the other king, the, oh, Rukmi's friends were saying, Yes, yes, he's the winner, not Balaram. They were all supporting Rukmi. So then they had a very big wager, it was a huge, huge amount. And again, Balaram won. But again, Rukmi said, No, no, I'm the winner. Balaram and all, and all of the friends of Rukmi, they're saying, Yes, he's the winner, not Balaram. And even a voice from the sky, there was a voice from the sky that said, Balaram is actually the winner. But they wouldn't admit it. So Balaram took his club. <sighs> Balaram took his club and smashed the head of Rukmi. And then he knocked out the teeth of the people who were laughing at him. Like this. So sometimes Lord Balaram gambles. <laughs> but uh, Krish uh, Balaram killed Rukmi. And Rukmi was the brother of Rukmi. Now previously, when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini, at that point, Rukmi had come after Krishna. He vowed, I'm going to get my daughter, my sister back, I'm going to bring my sister back. And, and so he came after Krishna. So Krishna fought with Rukmi and defeated him. And he cut his hair off. He, he didn't kill him because Rukmini was there. And Rukmini was saying, no, no, save my brother, don't kill my brother. She didn't want her brother to be killed. So Krishna didn't kill him, but he cut some of his hair like that. And then Balaram came that time, and Balaram said to Krishna, oh, you know, how you can do this to your brother-in-law? This is not very nice, you know. This is your brother-in-law, you should be more... Nice, you should show more courtesy to your own brother in law Krishna. How you could do this? Anyway, then we had the wedding, and Lord Balaram, he killed Rukmi. And that time Rukmini was also there. And Ruk, Rukmini, of course, feeling, oh, my brother has been killed. But, but Krishna is there. What, what can Krish, Krishna say? If, if, he, if he says anything, he will upset Balaram. Because the Lord Balaram will kill him. But at the same time, it's his brother-in-law and he wants to comfort his wife. It's a difficult situation. Family life. So many problems. You kill this one, that one, and you, know, you please one person, you don't please the other person. So Lord Krishna, he didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to take Balaram say, You know, he could, he could have said, well done, Balaram, you know. <laughs> but if he said that, then Rukmini would be upset, you know. And if he says, oh, Balaram, you shouldn't have killed him. This is my brother-in-law. Then Balaram will not be pleased, you know. So 
family affairs where Krishna had to deal with all these problems, you know, family life. So we have a bad sympathy for you <laughs> in family life. All these intrigues, all these family problems, politics, everyday different issues. Okay, any question, any comment? Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.